Yeah, the defensive end, uh, senior letterman Mike Bannig, number 52, did a good job of pursuing uh, the ball carrier and uh, just held on. It appears the official is going to call for a measurement. Well, we got a chance, Dave. How about if I just recognize the officials down here? Of course, I am one no of the members problem. of the board, and if I don't, uh, They'll I'll, kill you. I'll never hear the end of it at the <laughs> meeting next Wednesday. The referee on today's game is Chuck Taskline. He's about a 23-year veteran. Umpire Bobby Henderson working the wings is uh, Nick Armacek and Bill Folks, and the back judge is my good friend Doug Costain. And as always, they do a fine job. And like I said on a broadcast yeah. a couple weeks ago, I was just getting on them a little bit, but I made sure I let hey. everybody know, you know, it is tough out there, and these guys do one heck of a job. Hey, Dave, I'll be honest. I laughed harder than anybody when you said <laughs> that the referee had, had one eye, he'd be a cyclop. <laughs> hey, if you don't have a little bit of thick skin, you shouldn't step on the field. Oh, and there's, there's no <laughs> doubt about that. But... Uh, a little artwork down here. Yeah, I think the Wildcats, I'll tell you, like I said, there's a lot of optimism, and uh, I know the Essence fans have come out in full force today. Fourth down and one, huge play here. Abdallah to Leak, and I believe second effort's going to get it for him. I'll tell you, I like this young man. I do too. Only a junior, 150 pounds. That's a little bit undersized for a high school running back, but I'll tell you, he can take the ball north and south, and uh, he showed some ability there to get that extra yardage and pick up the big first down. Well, as you know, the size of the heart overcomes any kind of physical size. I'll tell you that. He's a hard runner. Looks like he puts 110% into everything. Well, Dave, that's what I love about high school football. Kids that weigh 140, 150, they get a chance right. to show their wares, and they can all be all-star performers. Abdallah with the fake, and he is going down. Yeah. Aaron Chirpin. Yeah, big chirp, number 77. He's a 6'1", 235-pound junior, and uh, he met Mr. Abdallah head-on. So the clock is ticking. We're under one minute to go in the first half. Belair up 7-0. Loss of six. Brings up second down, 16 from the 37-yard line of the Big Red. Yeah, I think the immediate concern right now for the Wildcats is to pick up this first down. The clock is becoming a factor, but uh, they need to pick up those 15 yards, get the first down, move the sticks. Abdallah, he's got a man open in the flat. Lacondis. Give him five to ten for grand theft. He comes out of nowhere with the pick. Well, Clint, you know, we haven't mentioned his name too much today, but he was a starter last year as a sophomore on that outstanding team, and uh, he possesses great speed. If, if there one, is one outstanding quality of the Big Reds, they possess more team speed than they've ever had, Dave. Laconda showed it there because it looked like he was beaten, but it almost was like he... He was faking Abdallah. You know, he was just hey. sitting back waiting for his time, and he yeah. kicked it. Speaking of a defensive back closing on the play, how about Eddie Drummond last night on that broadcast? Just unbelievable. But Clint showed the same thing there. Great closing. Come up with a big interception. Belair takes over. 32 seconds left. Massarelli's going to go up top. And he's going deep. Ben Taylor broken up, though. Broken up by Corey Miller. No flags. Looked like a little bit of a push there by Taylor. Yeah, if there's anything, it might have been on the offense, but I think that was a good no call by the official, and uh, once again, 32 seconds to go, ball out around your own 45-yard line. A lot of teams will be content just to kneel on it, go in and, and uh, take the halftime, but not Belair. Anywhere on the anywhere on the field, they're going to make the attempt to score. We see the replay here, Ben Taylor running down the field. Uh, it's a little bit out of our vision here, but nice job of delivering the ball. A little bit of contact. I believe it was incidental. Here we go in. Middle screen to Taylor. He's tripped up early by Leak. Well, with only 17 seconds to go in the half, Valera's going to call a timeout. But once again, the Big Red coaching staff wants to get the, bo the ball in the hands of Ben Taylor. Nice job with the middle screen, but Edison did a great job of closing on the play. Tell you what, Bear, we got to take a vote here between you and Anthony and myself. Leak's having a good game. Are we allowed to call him Leaky now? Because, you know, that's his nickname. And since we, I almost feel like I know the guy since I've been calling his name so much. Uh, what do you think? I'll tell you what, I, I know one thing, you will be calling his name because uh, <laughs> he's just an outstanding performer. And, uh, you know, we knew last week he ran for a lot of yardage, uh, 169 yards on 26 carries against Carrollton. But, uh, you know, once again, he's a junior and uh, just a fine football player. I'll tell you what, let's check in with Mike Anthony down on the field again. Mike, you've been by the Edison bench. Coach Bain was fired up down there. Did you, uh, could you tell what he was saying or what he was talking about or what the general feelings are? Well, Coach Bain sort of 
hides his feelings underneath, uh, I guess, and he sort of bends <laughs> down. I mean, he talks with assistant coaches, but he talks when he bends down on both knees and gets near the ground. And uh, if the ground could talk, boy, you would hear some things down there. But uh, There's he, some worms with a headache down there, huh? He talks to the assistant coaches really close to the ground, and he, the way his veins <laughs> pop out of his neck, uh, you really can't tell what he's saying. Uh, I try to peek in on him, but I don't want to get too close to him because he gets a little upset. But he's a great guy. I mean, Mike. He's fired up. Mike, is there a more intense coach in the house, oh. Valley? Uh, maybe Dave Caesar, but that they're, they're running one and two. <laughs> and then you have Bruni from Morton's Ferry. A lot of intense guys. Belair back to the air, overthrown. I'll tell you what, though, I have the utmost respect for Greg Bain. Uh, great guy. Where, you know, I followed him all the time when he was at Seville Catholic, won a state championship over there. Tremendous individual. Um, you get what you see. I mean, he's a very honest guy, and uh, you, have to, you have to really appreciate that. And like I said, the utmost respect for Greg Bain and Mr. Magistro yeah. on the other side. Well, Greg started as a defensive coordinator up at uh, Catholic and uh, just Mr. Intensity, and that's carried over to his head coaching days. And, uh, yeah, he's been around this game for a while and just a great representative of high school football. Belair back to the middle. Chaz call it would pick up a first down. Well, that's going to be close here. We're going to have to check the mark here, Dave. Uh, I think when he initially caught the ball, it was real close to stake. And uh, we're going to mark it now. And it appears they're going to mark it just a little bit short. So uh, it appears that is, we're going to have amazement here. But it's obviously short by about a yard. Uh, referee is going to bring the sticks out just to let the crowd know. But it's about a yard short. And Edison's going to take over with just five ticks remaining on the clock. What's your assessment of the first half so far? I'd say it's been a good, hard-hitting football game. Uh, you know, Edison, unfortunately, has probably got the better of it, but uh, Blair's come up with the big plays when they're needed, and uh, they're going to go into the halftime with a 7-0 uh, margin. Mike Anthony down there motioning to me. I believe he has something to say. That's, that's a shock, isn't it, Mike? <laughs> yeah. Something to say? Go uh, ahead, Mike. Hey, with five seconds to go, this half isn't over. We still haven't mentioned the name of Mike Pytash in a long time. He's Edison's main receiver with five seconds to go. We'll see if they try to go up top to Pytash. You never know here. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if uh, Coach Bain elects to uh, air it out here with just five seconds to go. Last play and a half, and he's not going to do it. He stays on the ground, and that's going to finish out the first half. Bonoski, the Buckster on the carry. Your first half is over, and I'll tell you what, Belair leads seven to nothing, but that score really does not tell the tale here. It has been an exciting first half, a lot of big plays, and I'll tell you what, if it's any indication of what's coming up in the second half, I can't wait. But right now we have halftime, and we are gonna go to a break. Stay with us. <laughs> 